Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss about an idea that I think circulates a little bit on forums and articles perhaps. And this is the idea that by cutting the leaves of a sick orchid, you're actually helping it develop and practically saving it. And this is something sent in by one of my viewers. He actually asked me what I think about this. And today we're gonna discuss about what I think about this by presenting some facts. So if you want the short version of this video, no, by cutting the leaves you will definitely not help an orchid recover faster. But that is just an opinion and why should you take my word for it? As I was saying to my viewer, when you are in doubt, the best thing to do is research for facts so you can actually draw your own opinion. Anyway, my intention with this video is to show you how you can actually research ideas that you hear and see if they're true or not or make your own opinion. Okay, so first of all, let's understand what leaves are good for. Now, whatever I will quote and I will show on the screen, you can find the links below and you can research them further. And for the purpose of making this video as easy to understand as possible, I'll pretty much try to keep it with simple terms. And also, I will be referring to orchids here, because other plants have other structures and stuff, but pretty much all plants that have leaves, like orchids, should perform the same. So the leaf is that structure of the orchid in which photosynthesis mainly is produced. What is photosynthesis? Well, according to an article focused on agricultural issues, photosynthesis is the process of producing food. This process involves the absorption of light mainly by the chlorophyll pigments and the absorption of carbon dioxide through the pores in the leaves. As a result, oxygen is generated and released in the atmosphere. Now we'll get to transpiration a little later, but now let's see food storage. The leaves serve as food storage organ of the plant, both temporarily and on long-term basis. This food that the leaf produces and stores is exported to the stem before leaf fall and utilized in the subsequent shoot development. Now this is a pretty simple article, but if you want a more extensive discussion, check out the link from Wikipedia. It has a lot of details in it, but if you're patient, it is a very good read and it will teach you a lot of things. So to sum it all up, the leaf is the kitchen of the orchid, the food is produced here, and then it is transported to the other organs, which will use it to produce new shoots and actually new roots as well. And when we're dealing with a sick orchid, we do really want new shoots and new roots, don't we? Now let's go back to transpiration. I do understand why people on forums say that you should cut the leaves because of this transpiration aspect. So let's see what transpiration is. So according to the very same article that I quoted earlier, plants lose a large volume of water through the leaves in the form of vapor. The exit of water is through the stomata and the cuticle. It's estimated that the loss of water through stomata through the process of transpiration exceeds 90% of the water absorbed by the roots. So I think you can actually see where the idea of cutting leaves actually sprouted from. However, it really, really lacks some very important details because this transpiration is not constant. It actually depends on quite a few factors. So while it is true that through the leaf the orchid is losing some water, the quantity of water lost can actually vary. So let's now take a look at an article from Wikipedia regarding transpiration. Another very good article, I'll link it below, of course. So we see here that there are some things that influence transpiration and water loss. And to quote, plants regulate the rate of transpiration by controlling the size of the semiotal apertures. The rate of transpiration is also influenced by the evaporative demand of the atmosphere surrounding the leaf, such as humidity, temperature, wind, and incidentally sunlight. Soil water supply and soil temperature can influence stomatal openings as well, and thus transpiration rate. And here's the most important bit. The amount of water lost by a plant also depends on the size and the amount of water absorbed at the roots. Now let's take our sick orchids here. And by the way, if you don't know, this is my ICU for sick orchids. I'll add a link to the whole history of these guys in the description as well. So let's take our orchids here. We do not have any roots on these orchids. So let's think about it. The amount of water this orchid is actually absorbing is zero because we do not have any roots. Thus, if we are to believe the facts stated by Wikipedia, this orchid's transpiration rate should be a lot lower than that of a normal orchid. It's not completely eradicated because, as we can see, the plant does deplete itself. However, the rate it's doing that 
is quite low because it does not have water to absorb so practically the pressure in the vessels is really not as strong as the pressure in a healthy orchid. For this reason, many people do suggest that sick orchids should be kept in a more humid environment, and I do agree to this. Now, of course, there are those species more tolerant to drought than others. I have callias here, which are pretty tolerant. But other orchids like Miltoniopsis really, really like humidity. It's pretty easy to assume that their transpiration rate might be different from the cattleya. Who knows, I'm not a scientist, I'm just assuming. But I am making my assumptions on facts. Now let's consider this. Indeed, if I cut the leaves on this orchid, I'm gonna prevent it from losing water. However, I'm also gonna prevent it from storing and utilizing energy. These leaves, even though they're a bit dehydrated, they still perform. They perform photosynthesis, they produce food, even if a low quantity of food, and this food actually helps the stem produce new shoots and new roots. Now, if I were to cut the food source of this orchid, what energy would I still have left for producing new shoots and new roots? Now, I'll give it that orchids are special. They're pretty different than any other type of plant. Their metabolism is slower, so things do happen slower to them. Things like producing new shoots and new roots take several months, but also dying takes several months. Take a weed from your garden and cut it and let it sit in the sun for the whole day. You'll observe that that weed is already depleted by the end of the day. This is because it is not an epiphyte. Its metabolism is evolved accordingly to the type of conditions it is growing, which are terrestrial conditions. Water is pretty much always available at the root system. Orchids, on the other hand, they evolved to actually withstand drought conditions by slowing down their metabolism and that's pretty much why it takes quite a lot of time for an orchid to bounce back. I'm getting pretty far from the subject at this point, but you know me, I can blab all day long about orchids. In any case, let's draw a conclusion. Is it better to cut the food source of an orchid in order to preserve water or leave the food source alone because transpiration is lowered and actually try to promote a higher humidity to lower that transpiration even more. So it's up for you to decide. You have the links all in the description below and those are not really opinions, those are facts. So using these facts, draw your own conclusion whenever you are in doubt and whenever something does not sound good to you, just search for the facts and connect the dots. It's easy as that to understand how plants work and how you should act with your orchids. So alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a share. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos. And of course, feel free to leave me comments down below, questions or whatever you want to share with me. Topics like this perhaps. And I'll answer you back, maybe point you in the right direction or make a video for you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchinature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!